new restaurant marketing tips that independent small business restaurant owners need to know about because your customer database and your POS system is a gold mine and we're going to ramp up with Tracy Matney of Victory Points right now. So just coming to this episode right now as our discussion. So in about 10, 20 seconds, can you give a quick snapshot about what you do with regards to restaurant marketing? Sure. My main focus is to help restaurants build a database of fans, fans for their brand, so that they can put more bills in their till. So I help them get more customers into their email, text, and messenger database so we can turn those people, those leads, into customers. Wonderful. And one of the things that I love about what you're saying is bills in the tills. Okay. Yeah, fans for your brand, bills in your till. Bills in the tills. What's up with that? And, and with regards to email marketing, because with is it difficult for restaurants to do email marketing or no? I think so. I think it is really hard for them. I mean, I've been in restaurants since I was 16. Like we talked about last time I was, uh, I started as a hostess in the industry and I saw so I'm 32. So half of my life, literally 16 years, I've seen these restaurant owners run around busy using chat marketing is that it's automated. So we set up a system for them that um, reaches out with an offer. It pulls them into messenger. We give them that offer. And then automatically we would follow up with them by email, text, and messenger. Gotcha. So messenger. So um, some people, what, what's, I know what it is, but could you explain yeah. a little bit about more about, is that? What's sure. It? So messenger is the messaging app that is connected to your Facebook page. So every restaurant should have a business page on Facebook and they can have an Instagram as well, all connected to one place. So whenever somebody messages your restaurant page, right now they probably get this message that says, hey, thanks for messaging us, we'll get back to you. And then you probably get back to them in four or five days, but by that point, they've already gone somewhere else. I mean, this actually happened to me recently. My husband and I were out in an area where we don't normally go, like about 30 minutes from our house. This was like, I guess I should say recently, like January. It's not that recent, but we, um, we wanted to, I wanted to know if this place was still open because we were on date night and it was like 9 PM and I couldn't find their hours anywhere on their website. And that was like weird. So I sent them a message and then the next day they messaged me back. Oh yeah, we're up until 10 PM. And I'm like, well, like we ended up going somewhere else because they didn't have, they didn't get back to me. Right. So what a messen what a messenger is, is a place for people to message you. So we set up a chat bot that will automatically respond. So if someone says the words like open or hours or location or where, like, where are you? Mm -hmm. If anyone says any of those things, we have keyword. Those are keywords that send an automatic response. So I could have gotten an automated response that said, yeah, we're open Monday through Friday, blah, 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 blah. Click here for Google directions. And then they just click a button that takes them to Google Maps directing them directly to the restaurant. And so um, we use messenger marketing. We use a program called ManyChat. And ManyChat is it's a software that you can actually create um, these chatbots through. It's actually really easy to set up a basic chatbot. Yeah, because you're talking about chatbots and you know artificial and doing all this. That sounds like a lot. Well, I should actually clarify. So a chatbot is not artificial intelligence. Oh. AI, AI is creepy, okay? AI, this is not AI. This is just oh. a pre-written script, pre-written automated script. So AI is like machine learning. This isn't requiring any learning. It's just a pre-written script. That's the difference. Okay. So basically, if I say, where are you located? I have a pre-written response that's going to say, we are located at da, da 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 Click here to get directions. If I said, do you have any offers right now? Then whatever offer we're running, that will, that message will pop up. Yep. Here's our most recent offer or deals, specials, offers, any of those words will pop up that message. Gotcha. No, you know, I, that's helpful because I have a restaurant, a family restaurant in St. Louis. Okay. It has a uh, Miss Big barbecue, right? barbecue restaurant. Yeah, exactly. And when we're, I was telling my folks about the, the chat bots and all that, they were, they were asking me that same question I was telling you, like, okay, is this some type of robot I have to build out now? It is a robot, basically, but it's a pre, pre-functioning, pre-written robot. <laughs> pre-written robot, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, having it all connected is, is a lot more complex, but having just a basic chat bot, like, I would recommend any restaurant, every single business, not even just restaurants, but especially 
brick and mortar businesses, they should have some kind of basic chat bot. It's totally free. Mini chat offers a free um, chat bot. Like you can actually get basic questions like keywords and things like that. It's limited in terms of like how many keywords you can set up and there's certain functionality that you need a pro version, but you can get a lot accomplished with their free account. Wonderful. So you work with um, about 17 plus different restaurants out there in um, around the around the country. So mm-hmm. what are you seeing differently now uh, that um, now that we're doing a lot of different type of ordering, like more people now are ordering online than ever yeah. before. So are you seeing a lot of more email traffic sending out or more chat bots and text messages? Like, tell me about those three things, email, sure. text, chat. Well, so the system that I create for restaurants is actually all integrated in one. So what's really cool is we can create it all in mini chat. And then the chat bot can actually send out emails and text as well as messenger messages. So that's what I mean by like these restaurants don't have time to sit down and like, you know, today I'm going to send out a message about this. Like this is all automated follow up. So we, we create it all. We set it all up. It's a ton of work in the beginning, but once it's all set up and running, then it's, it's running. So like, let's say that we're doing an offer that's like a buy one, get one free, whatever then if we're giving away that kind of offer for them to get that offer, they have to give us their email address and their phone number. So people are usually willing to give up information. If it's a really juicy offer, it's not going to work if you're going to want to do like 10% off. And I think one of the, one of the things I'm seeing a lot of restaurants do is they're trying to pinch pennies and they're saying like, we're struggling right now. We can't give away buy one, get one free. But the thing is other restaurants are, and they're going to get that whole business and you got zero. So you can either give away a really good offer and then get some business or you can give away a 10% off and get no business because people are going to go to the next guy that has a better deal. Does that make sense? Especially right now. People now are still doing those type of buy one, give one freeze that you're seeing out in the industry. I have a client in Texas, actually many chat just featured me on their blog about them. But even during COVID-19, we launched their campaign on March 10th and the article stopped at the beginning of April, but I just looked at it and they've already gotten $30,000 in sales since March 10th. And it's April. What yeah, is sometime it? in April in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I, I don't know if you're editing this, but maybe yeah. you can edit out the dates, but yeah. like from mid from March 10th through the end of April, you know, they got $30,000 in increased sales. Like I'm not talking about total sales. I'm talking about incremental tracked sales. Mm. So like the system get was giving out, um, a buy one, get one free offer. Mm -hmm. So that's still sales on top of giving away that free offer. Does that make sense? In addition to their regular sales. Right. So it's, you know, creating this system an integrated system, doing all the heavy lifting up front. And probably you set a lot of this stuff up years ago or or months ago. Not years, months. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Weeks. Yeah. A couple hours. (laughs) A couple hours ago. No, I mean, a lot of these things are like, changing all the time. So, you know, I do have a client that we launched their campaign in September. It's a buy one, get one free breakfast entree. And that's been killing it around $10,000 a month in tracked sales. This is like a mom and pop diner. They're they're breakfast and lunch only small town, tiny little town. They're getting consistently $10,000 a month in sales from this buy one, get one free deal. So the thing is we had to shift for them is a lot of people aren't eating breakfast out right? But they need to eat lunch out. So we shifted to doing a lunch offer and um, that's helped a lot. Um, We haven't been able to keep it at $10,000 a month um, because obviously people aren't eating out as much, Um, but it is still holding, holding fast at around 3000 a month. Right. And anything is better than zero. Right. (laughs) Well, and for him, like we had this conversation whenever COVID shut down all the in, in, in restaurant dining, which is a big reason people go to a diner is for community. They don't necessarily go there for the food. I mean, his fish and chips are good, but people are going there for the fish and chips, but they're really going there because they want to see their friends. So, and his population is a lot older and a lot of them really are scared to leave their home. So um, that's, that's just kind of that city is very, it's an older population, but I think shifting to lunch makes more sense. So instead of just like, well, we have to stay firm with our marketing. Like you, you have to pivot, you know, you have to do what, what makes more sense. Right. And it's, and it's key there, Tracy, it's talking about um, having 
that pivot of not doing what you have done in the past, because I think that a lot of business owners and those who, uh, small business owners, and I'm not talking about small business, meaning the 500 employees or a thousand employees. I mean, the, the small business one, they have 25 employees or less. Mm -hmm. They went to this opportunity for a dream that they had, a dream of right. freedom. And if they focus on that dream of freedom that they envision for themselves instead of, well, my dream, because their dream was never to always stay in the kitchen. And, right. And, right. And, you know, cutting meat and doing all this stuff. No, their dream was the freedom, the freedom and the opportunity to build a life that they want to live. Mm -hmm. And to do that, that you always have to pivot. So uh, that's key in that mindset that you're talking about. Um, do you see that a lot of restaurant owners have started to open up their minds to the opportunities of using more of the, e the marketing of email, text and chat now more than ever, or some of them are still in this, well, we, can't do that so we just can't do the curbside so we just might as well close down I want to do something they don't want to do um you know so we're gonna we're gonna do the buy one get one free any any drink now right so hopefully that will help well i think and one of the things that are in those type of restaurants um favor is be, if they set up a system like you're talking about then they have that before and after data here's mm -hmm. your way here's my way let's test and see which ones yeah all right, so give us some examples about um, some restaurants who, you know, they tried it their way and it kind of, they want to do it their way first and then mm -hmm. what happened? Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking of one restaurant and they wanted to do this offer that I thought, you know, it's really not going to work. I just, right now, like that product that they sell, it's just, it's kind of bougie. It's kind of like a high end. And to do like, like they wanted to do, buy a specialty item and get a small thing for free. And I just felt like it wasn't going to resonate with people right now. Right, um, right. And so I told them that and they just really didn't, they were like, no, we just can't, we have, they're pinching pennies basically. They're just saying like, no, I like, I need that revenue. I need that profit. Yeah. And they're thinking of it in terms of like, well, I'll giving away all my profit. But what they don't realize is that they're not going to get any. So, Unfortunately, we ran that for three weeks and I just reached out, reached out again this week and I just said, hey, how you holding up? Like I mentioned, and also this was somebody I was helping for free. This wasn't a, um, like a paying client. Uh, it was just someone I was like giving some advice to. And uh, they reached out to me. They reached back and said, yeah, you know what? We're, things aren't looking good. We've got like a week left on, the, you know, till the end of the month. Let's go ahead and let's just try what you wanted to do the buy one, get one free because I need people through the door. And that was like a text I just got last night. So I'm like, I feel so bad because I wanted to do that in the beginning and I wish that they would have listened to me. Um, no, it, it makes it so much easier when, uh, and I, I, when business owners listen to those individuals who have the experience and the data um, from their past experiences or from their mm -hmm. the partnerships that they've had in the past and trying to relay that. Yet sometimes uh, it is that they they feel that they know what is best for their business. Like yeah, it's never been done before. Right. But you've been well, and he he's under a lot of pressure. So I think he was just feeling like I'm so worried that I'm gonna have to close my restaurant. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, right. I mean, he's got staff he's got to pay. He's got all these people that are like like the landlord is not giving them any kind of cut on their rent at all. And so it's like, it's just like all these bills are coming. And so we get into this like scramble mode where we have, there's a lot we have to do and it feels kind of stressful. Yeah. And, and it's like, and there's sometimes where you still have to feel that fear and do it anyway and be, mm -hmm. and really be counterintuitive of what they, uh, your regular thought process says, no, 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 but maybe that is a go, go, go and, and move yeah. forward with it. And even for a short test period of time, because what's great about digital is that you can turn it off very quickly if you're right. not seeing the results, unlike if you buy television ads or newspapers or billboards. Yes. And those things. Yeah, exactly. And that's one thing I love about social media marketing is that you can always delete it. Or if it's an ad, you can just toggle it right off. And people ask me all the time, how long should we run these ads? Like how many days? And I'm like, like indefinitely. <laughs> I mean, if it's not working, we turn it off. If it is working, we keep going and we increase the budget. Right. And that's something that I think a lot of people maybe don't understand about Facebook ads 
is that they just, they, they've never used them before. And when they do the hit the boost button, they're putting like $30 into the Facebook machine and hoping that money comes out, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, they, they it's, ask them, how long do you want to run this campaign? So they're like, sure, $30 for 10 days. That's like the suggestion Facebook says. It's like, do you want to spend $30 to boost this post for 10 days? And they're like, okay. So it kind of sets them up to me in a bad way because then when I want them to spend 10, $15 a day, which really isn't that much and how much in running ads, they're like, whoa, 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 $10 a day. That's like, that's like $300 a month. Right. I'm like, okay, so let's, let's look at the ROI. If you spend $300 in a month on running an, an ad with an offer, let's just say your average check is $25. Let's say $30 for the easy math, 30, $30 times 10 customers. If you got 10 customers that month, you would break even, right? Mm -hmm. And 10 is not that many customers. <laughs> you know, I, with my system, I have, I have people getting between 75 customers to 500 customers a month, you know? Wow. So even if you got a hundred customers at $30, each just $3,000 in, in sales. So that's going to totally cover the $300 ad spend, but it's hard because you, you're afraid to like put money and not know if it's going to come back to you. Right. And I think what helps in some of the things that you're talking about is you're still creating those messages in the, in the text, the emails, the chats, and putting that in, in place first before mm -hmm. you go ahead and put your money and then pull a slide right. off the Facebook machine. Exactly. You have process in place first, testing messages and testing offers right. see which one works. And then go ahead and put in the slot machine yep. and figure out, you know, can we go ahead and get the 75, yeah. 500, 500 more customers? Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because we do always launch this stuff organically first. So like we'll build out the chat bot, we'll build out the offers. We post it on their Facebook page, pin it to the top and we change out the cover photo that has the offer and we'll test that. And if like a ton of people get it, then we're like, all right, cool. It's resonating. And then we can, we can go ahead and run ads. But if like nobody opted in and nobody came and used it, then we know it was a bad offer. I mean, I've been doing this for long enough now. I know what offers are going to work and what aren't. And that's one of the challenges I think a lot of restaurant owners and other business owners face is the offer is literally the most important thing for the entire ad campaign. Mm -hmm. You can have beautiful images, these like gorgeous videos that are like got music in the background and cool transitions. You can have like the coolest copy, you know, but if your offer sucks, no one's going to come in. Right. So the offer has to, that's the most important thing. In fact, on my YouTube channel, I talk about this a lot. Like I, I talk about like, what kind of offers should you do? Why should you do certain kinds of offers? So. No, Tracy, thank you for your time. Uh, and I really appreciate it. And, you know, I would love to have you back, you know, talking about the restaurant markets near and dear to my heart. You know, as a technology broker and advisor, I work with a lot of those restaurants on the on the software and technology side, with yeah. phones and, and the computer systems and everything. But the marketing side is fascinating to me and making sure to disconnect with folks like yourself. So thank sure. you so much. Yeah, it's been great being here. Thank you for having me back. He's here again, and I hope you got a couple of good tidbits out of this discussion. If you want to continue to pivot and ramp up, 